payroll affects everyone in an organization, especially if those who are responsible for it make mistakes. How would you feel if you discovered errors on your paycheck? Payroll errors can go beyond calculation errors, though, and can result in government fines, additional taxes, or even jail time if labor and payroll laws were violated. In this video, we'll talk about labor as well as payroll legislation. It might be helpful for you to take notes while watching this video because there are a lot of laws we'll be covering in a short time. And if this video piqued your interest to learn more about the subject, there are many more YouTube videos and newspaper articles on labor and payroll legislation. Payroll is an important part of any business because labor costs often represent a significant portion of a company's expenses. In addition, employees are a critical part of a business's success, so it makes a lot of sense that paying employees correctly and timely is an important consideration in any business operation. There's probably no faster way to lose an employee than not paying the employee the correct amount on the payday. On the other hand, paying employees represents a liability and opens a company up to risk. Miscalculation can lead to overpayments, which represents a misuse of a firm's assets. Underpayments can increase the potential for legal action and could result in governmental fines. That is why companies must be careful to hire the right payroll accountant, because the wrong one could open up the company to potential embezzlement. Aside from being trustworthy, payroll accounts must also be up to date on labor laws. However, labor laws are increasingly complex. Another important part of payroll is its impact on decision makers. Labor costs must be considered as a part of product pricing and are part of a firm's competitive advantage. Payroll and the related cost is an important part of the business. Data gathered from payroll reports informs managers about trends and departmental needs and costs. Managers use the information to track and predict workflow changes, especially in seasonal occupations. Many external entities require firms' payroll reports such as internal revenue service, state government revenue departments, and labor unions. These external bodies use the reports to ensure that appropriate taxes are remitted and that employees' needs are met. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, the accounting industry is predicted to grow approximately 4% through 2029. Let's now look at important labor legislation. Employment legislation is highly complex and dynamic, and it applies to all businesses. So whether you're a large or small employer, you must abide by the law and be aware of changes. Some of the labor laws were introduced because of changes in employee types and societal shifts, and many of them were enacted beginning in the 1960s. For instance, the Equal Pay Act of 1963 mandated equal pay for equal work. The initial statute for filing a claim was 180 days, but was removed with the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited discrimination based on race, gender, religion, or national origin, and was extended to include other protections, such as people with AIDS, pregnant workers, disabled workers, and employees with different sexual orientations. The Age Discrimination and Employment Act, ADEA, prevents mandatory retirement for workers over the age of 40. An AARP survey conducted in Oregon found that 62% of workers over the age of 40 who have applied for employment have been discriminated against due to their age. The interviewer might ask when the applicant graduated from college, or whether they're familiar with programs that were introduced a long time ago to gauge the, the age of the applicant. In addition, there are other employee-related legislation. Let's talk about a few of them here. The Occupational Safety and Health Act of 1970 defines and enforces healthy and safe working environments for employees. The Employee Retirement Income Security Act in 1974 protects the retirement funds of employees. In 2019, the Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement or SECURE Act 
granted small employers tax incentives if they implemented an automatic retirement plan enrollment for employees. COBRA extends health insurance coverage after termination, whereas the Immigration Reform and Control Act in 1986 requires employers to provide proof of employment eligibility, and employers may use the E-Verify system to confirm legal employment eligibility. The Americans with Disability Act in 1990, or ADA, protects the rights of disabled workers as well as the Civil Rights Act of 1991, which legislated monetary penalties for civil rights infringements. And there's even more labor legislation. The Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993 granted employees the right to take medical leave under reasonable circumstances without fear of job loss. The leave is unpaid, but medical benefits must continue. Upon return, the employer must provide an equivalent position with equivalent pay, benefits, and terms of employment. As of 2023, several states have enacted higher levels of paid family leave legislation. And under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, employers may receive a tax credit if they offer their employees paid leave under FMLA. USERA, or the Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act of 1994, governs the rights of military service members in terms of length of military service, return to work, and accommodations for injured veterans. PRWOR, or the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act of 1996, stipulates new hire reporting within 20 days, this act also protects children and needy families by enforcing child support obligations. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, of 1996 protects workers and their families who have pre-existing medical conditions from discrimination based on those conditions. Even when a business no longer exists, its responsibility for the secure storage of records does not end. The Defense of Marriage Act of 1996, DOMA, restricted payroll-related taxes and benefits to include only traditionally married couples, denying married status to people in the same-sex unions. U.S. versus Windsor overturned DOMA in September 2013. And following the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Obergefell versus Hodges in 2015, the U.S. Department of Labor updated the definition of spouse to include same-sex marriages, regardless of where they live. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act, or also called SOX, of 2002, provides criminal penalties for violations of ERISA, and SOX also provides protections for whistleblowers and mandates rotation of auditors among publicly owned companies. It also mandates that corporate officers must attest to the accuracy and completeness of the contents of the financial statements. That was a lot, wasn't it? Now that you're more familiar with the various labor laws, we can now discuss payroll-related legislation. The first payroll-specific law in the United States was the 16th Amendment, to the U.S. Constitution, which mandated the collection of income tax by employers to fund the infrastructure improvements of booming cities. Prior to that, federal income tax had been only temporarily instituted to recover from the Civil War's high cost. During the 1930s, the number of payroll-related laws increased significantly reflecting the need for employee protection from unscrupulous employers and to fund programs for workers in need. Each act passed during the Great Depression centered on wages, employee welfare, and worker care. The Davis-Bacon Act of 1931 applies to governmental contract workers and guaranteed that wages would equal the local prevailing wage. As of 2023, the minimum wage for all employees affected by the Davis-Bacon Act is $16.20 per hour, unless the local prevailing minimum wage is higher. Tipped employees who are subject to the Davis-Bacon Act have a minimum wage of $13.75 per hour or the local prevailing wage. 
The Walsh-Healy Public Contracts Act 1936 extends the Davis-Bacon provision by mandating wage and hour regulations for people who worked on governmental contracts exceeding $10,000. It also mandates minimum wage, 1.5 times for overtime, and prohibits employment of individuals younger than 16. The Social Security Act of 1935 provides insurance for families of wage earners who could no longer work. The Medicare Act created medical insurance for the elderly, elderly, also known as the Federal Income Contributions Act or FICA. Currently separated in two pieces, first the old age survivors and disability uh, insurance and two, Medicare. The Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 is one of the earliest pieces of legislation that specifically applies to payroll. Prior to the enactment of FLSA, working hours, wages, and conditions were unregulated. This act established the maximum standard number of working hours per week and the minimum wage. The concept of exempt and non-exempt employees comes from the FLSA. This law only applies to businesses that conduct interstate commerce, with some exceptions, and to employees of the business, not independent contractors. The Federal Unemployment Tax Act of 1939, better known as FUTA, is part of the social responsibility legislation. Employers contribute to unemployment benefits for qualified workers. The state counterpart is State Unemployment Tax Act, or SUTA. FUTA and SUTA is employment insurance for employees who are released from employment through no fault of their own. For example, employees who are laid off or terminated without cause are eligible for FUTA and SUTA. Please note that SUTA pays unemployment compensation while FUTA pays for the administration of the program. Other payroll-related legislation was enacted to ensure employers' honesty. Although the federal income tax uh, was instituted in 1916, no legislation existed to ensure that employers remitted withheld tax amounts until the current Tax Payment Act of 1943. Like other legislation, it was legislation passed during wartime because it was part of the funding for the U.S. involvement in the war. Workers' compensation insurance was part of legislation that provided salary replacement and health insurance for employees who sustained injuries in the course of performing their work-related duties. Workers' compensation is administered by each state, and the cost of the insurance depends on workers' duties. Workers in riskier occupations like warehouse tasks have more expensive insurance than those who work in an office setting. Although workers' compensation is not a tax, it is mandatory. It's a mandatory payroll expense for employers. The Affordable Care Act, ACA, of 2010 was one of the most significant payroll accounting changes in recent years. The primary focus of the act was health care coverage for all Americans. However, employers have a lot of reporting responsibilities related to the act, for instance, Form 1095. In late 2017 and early 2018, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and the Consolidated Appropriations Act made significant changes to the payroll environment. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act changed the tax percentages, reduced federal income tax deductions for many employees, and introduced a new form, W-4, and tax guide in 2020. The Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2018 di directly affected the E-Verify program by increasing funding for the program. E-Verify allows employers to instantly check a person's employment eligibility. However, it should be noted that E-Verify does not replace the need for completing and filing Form I-9. It can, instead, it can be used to streamline the hiring process by offering instant verification of an employee's right to work in the United States. Another part of this act includes monetary penalties of $1,000 per instance, plus damage for employers who withhold employee tip earnings inappropriately. The act does not prohibit tip pools, but it specifies that managers and supervisors can participate in those tip pools. 
The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Stimulus CARES Act of 2020 was enacted to provide economic relief for individuals and businesses. I have not covered all the legislation in detail, but I hope you have a good sense of the complexity of labor and payroll legislation. It probably goes without saying that it is important for payroll accounts to stay up to date on changes that affect payroll.